So today in this lecture, we are going to discuss a few different ways Indigenous peoples are able to read the stars. Now, when we think about a star, we can actually measure some of their behaviours, their observable behaviours to our naked eye. And when we think about stars, one of the most obvious thing I think that comes to mind, at least my mind, is the fact that they twinkle. We can have sparkling, twinkly stars up there, or we can have very still points of light. So we're going to investigate this and learn more about the ways in which Indigenous peoples are able to read the stars. Yeah, so the Torres Strait Islander peoples uh, actually recognised this property in the stars. And so they knew that when the stars were clear and there wasn't this twinkling effect, that the weather would turn warm and sort of calm. Um, but then when those stars really began to twinkle uh, intensely, that's when they knew that the um, seasons was about to change over um, and that the weather would soon become cooler and a lot more windy and a lot more turbulent. And the late uh, Merriam Elder, Uncle John Barsa, explains that uh, not only do these stars act as seasonal markers in that hot to cool weather change, but that their properties could even be used to predict daily weather. And that at the precise moment that that seasonal weather began to change and when those stars began to twinkle, they knew that they could still at that time go out and fish, but they knew that they had to make the most of it because it would soon change and become um, unsafe for them to fish in that cooler and, and choppier weather. Sure. So Uncle also goes on to explain that through reading the very subtle variations, even more subtle than the twinkling, that even more information can be attained. So for example, if a star is not twinkling uh, and say it's uh, appearing a white blue color, this of course tells us that uh, the weather's quite still. There's not much happening, it's quite calm, not much is going to change. However, if that star begins to twinkle erratically, uh, very rapid twinkling, then we know that there's a lot going on up in the atmosphere. In fact, there's a lot of turbulence up in the atmosphere. And the faster that twinkle, uh, the more turbulence that the atmosphere is experiencing. And that directly relates to the wind that we experience down here. So if there is rapid twinkling, uh, the star readers, they know that the conditions down here are probably going to get a lot more windy. There's one more variation that's of really high interest to me, and that is colour variation. So stars can also change colour to how they appear with our eye at least. Now what's happening is if, say, a star reader noticed a star going from white, bluey colour to then perhaps starting to twinkle to then perhaps very erratic twinkling, something can also happen in that the colour of that star can go from blue, bluey, whitey colour to a reddy orange colour. And that of course tells us more information about what is happening up in the atmosphere. And to the star readers uh, and to the Torres Strait Islander peoples, this very much indicates a change in weather and there's very likely uh, rain clouds or storm coming. Yeah, so that uh, starlight colour change that you're talking about there uh, is a process that we call chromatic aberration. And so that is a phenomenon that occurs when light passes through a medium that can't exactly interpret the colours that are going through it in the same way that it normally would. And so an example of this is when light would pass through water, for example. So water molecules that appear in our atmosphere, as an example. And that would mean that the blue light would be scattered off the, the water in, the, in different directions, whereas the red light would likely pass straight through. So then only the red light is reaching us and our eyes here on Earth. So you get that blue to red shift of the stars that they've noticed up in the Torres Straits. 